Hi everybody, welcome to our Friday assembly. I am just getting the bits ready for us. There we go, all ready, Friday the 5th of May. So what an amazing week we have had, um, if you've been learning at home or at school. Um, it is actually, uh, was World Book Day yesterday and we had a brilliant day, which we'll have a little talk about. And we've all been really busy getting ready to see everybody back to school next week. We cannot wait. And as I said, loads of children who've been in school are really excited about seeing their friends. And I know lots of you at home are as well. So almost there. And we're really looking forward to seeing you. So let's have a little look. First of all, first thing we do on a celebration assembly is celebrate our learning and see who has earned the most house points for their fantastic learning this week. So if we move on to our lovely house captain hero named people. So what am I trying to say? The people our houses are named after. We have Ellie Simmons, we have Chris Hoy, we have Mo Farah and we have Jess Ennis. And let's see who of those houses earned the most points this week. And we have in fourth place with one point it is sir chris hoy so fourth place with one point hoy house in third place with two two points it is sir mo mo farah so farah has two points in second place with three points it is jess ennis ennis house so that means that the winning house this week is Simmons House. And um, it was very close between Ennis and Simmons this week, but Simmons House just pipped them to it. So well done if you're in Simmons House. And let's see when you're all back next week, how many house points you can be earning for your house so that you can be the winners. Um, and I will put the arrows back up in the hall for when we can start assemblies again. And um, you'll be able to see how things are going and working towards a non-uniform day. So fantastic. So yesterday was World Book Day, and um, for those of you who weren't in school, I thought I would show you pictures of the doors. So lots of, um, obviously, you know, we've only got one classroom being used for each year group. So this is what's on our Twitter feed. So go to the website and have a look at our front page. You can't see the whole pictures on here, but you can if you go to the website. Um, so this was the bear and the piano. This is my door. This is year two, the book with no pictures. Mrs. Laws did Mary Poppins. And um, year three did Oliver Twist, which was brilliant. And then the next one we have is uh, Willow Class did Super Tato. And um, Cherry Class did The Crayons, The Day the Crayons Ran Away. Oh, I've missed the title out. You'll have to, you'll have to check it out for yourself. Um, this is Bob Baby from year one. And um, this one was year four, and I cannot remember the title of the book, but if you go onto the website, you will be able to see that. Um, but it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant door. So, and then the last ones, we had year five, these are both year five, um, Doctor's Use, and then, oh, this one's year five as well. And then year six, it did the story, which is called Journey, which was brilliant as well. So some fabulous decorations on the doors, um, really liked those. And um, I now can announce the winners. So Mrs. Laws and I went round and we decided that it was too difficult to choose a first, second and third. So we have just chosen our three favourites, which were Willow Class for Super Potato. Well done, Willow Class. Um, we liked a Year Four. Well done, Year Four. And we also, our other favourite was Year 6, The Journey Story. So well done to Willow Class, Year 4 and Year 6. You were our three favourites. I mean, it's so difficult to choose because they were all lovely. Um, we loved all of them and we've, we've loved seeing the work you've done for World Book Day this year. It's been a funny old day and I know lots of you at home have dressed up. So well done if you've dressed up at home. And I was dressed up um, as the bear from the bear and the piano, which is I'll leave my door on. So if anybody comes in next week, you'll be able to see my door. But it was um, it was it was great fun to do that. And hopefully next year, World Book Day, we'll all be back together again. Um, so well done to those three classes who were the winners. The three year groups who were the winners. You get to choose a book, one book for your class or year group. 
Um, so let me know which book you would like me to order and I will get that book for you and um, you'll be able to have that as, a, as, a, as your prize. So well done, everybody. Um, then we had the story. So as you will know, we started our story in reception. Um, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five and six all added to it. And you had to use some, you had to use the picture that you were given. So you were given a picture of a recorder, a brick, some butterflies, some wings, a bracelet, a yacht and a watch. And you had to write a story uh, about that and pass it on up to the next year group to continue. So a little bit like that game where you used to fold a piece of paper over called Consequences. Um, so I'm gonna read you the story now, which is exciting. So this is the reception part. Once upon a time, there was a pirate on a boat and he was playing a recorder. A tiger was sleeping on an island and heard the music. The tiger told a little bird in one of the trees to listen to the sound. Well done, reception. And then year one took over. The recorder made the lowest sound, which made the bird fall asleep. And he fell off the branch he was sitting on and fell onto the tiger, who roared angrily. At that moment, the dark, spooky pirate ship moved into shore. The tiger went to investigate the ship, but it was deserted. He went down into the cabin and found a glowing brick and carefully went up to it. Then year two took over. The tiger picked up the glowing brick and suddenly he was transported to a magical island. He found himself standing on a sunny, beautiful beach surrounded by butterflies who were trying to land on his nose. The start, oh, that was, that was year two. And then year three took over. The startled, stripy tiger admired the beautiful butterflies and a beautiful butterfly landed on his nose and he felt a big sting. The tiger began, as the tiger began to panic, he backed towards a large palm tree. He remembered the special glowing brick inside his backpack. He reached inside and held the brick against his chest. He closed his eyes, crossed his paws and made the magic roar sound. Seconds later, on his hairy back, Two glittery transparent wings began to grow and the tiger began to float. He flew past the butterflies and headed towards the cloudless sky. But she had three and then year four took over. Up in the endless sky, the tiger flew through an enormous gray fluffy cloud. All of a sudden, the magic from the glowing brick began to wear off. Gradually, his wings became smaller and smaller, which made him feel heavier and heavier. As he became heavier, he became confused about what was happening. Then he realized he was falling. He gripped in his backpack for the magic brick, only to realize that it was just an ordinary brick now. As he sped through sky towards the clear blue water, he noticed an enormous yacht. Maybe I can survive. He crashed onto the boat. Eventually, he sat up, scratching his head. There was no one around him. Or was there? And then year five took over. All of a sudden, the tiger heard a muffled and desperate cry for help. Following the noise, he went below the creaky deck and began to explore. He looked everywhere and found only empty, abandoned rooms which smelled mouldy and musty. There was only one room left to check. Cautiously, he pushed the door open and saw an old unshaven man slumped on a chair, his hands tied behind his back. Pouncing forward, the tiger used his claws to cut through the thick ropes. As the man was released, they felt a sudden bump. They raced upstairs and when they got to the top deck, there stood Hawaii with its looming volcano. Out of the corner of his eye, the tiger suddenly spied a glowing light coming from the charms on the man's bracelet. Does your bracelet usually glow? That's hard to say. Does your bracelet usually glow? The tiger asked the man. No, the man replied nervously, holding up the bracelet to inspect the strange light. Just then, there was the noise of a fierce rumble, followed by an ear-piercing explosion. 
Huge lumps of red hot lava began shooting into the sky and began raining down on all of them. <coughs> Year six had to take over then. As they heard the lava splash into the water, they began frantically searching the boat for some way to avoid a fiery death. Suddenly, the tiger stepped on something hard, which made a faded ticking noise. Without damaging it further, he gently picked it up in his slobbery jaws and hurried to show the man who was rummaging through the deserted bags. As the sound of lava loudened, the man grabbed the watch from the tiger's jaws and began twisting the rusty cogs. Unexpectedly, the watch jumped into motion. The surroundings started melting into blackness as the tiger and man disappeared. As the world came back into focus, they found themselves in a blank, desolate place with an abandoned building in the middle of an overgrown field. At least we are safe from the lava, but where on earth are we? For the next 50 years, the two friends lived together in this isolated part of the world. They spent their time transforming the building into a cosy home. Over time, other animals heard of this haven and moved there. Soon their home filled with animals from all over the world and they named it the zoo. People came from far and wide to see the amazing creatures living in the zoo. This was the first time that an animal attraction like this had existed. The man and the tiger lived happily together for many years, a lot longer than usual because of all the magic flowing through their veins. To this day, many zoos have been opened and are still popular tourist attractions, all thanks to the magical events created by a recorder, a brick, some butterflies, a pair of wings, a yacht, a bracelet, and a watch. That's so good. That's the end. The end of your brilliant story. Well done, everybody. I really love that. And I love the way it built up and built up and built up. But I love the fact that, you know, reception, you thought of the tiger and and, and see how that's what adventures that tiger had and how he ended up living um, and having a lovely time. So that's absolutely fantastic. Well done, everybody. Okay, let's see who our star learners are this week. Assembly's a little bit longer today, isn't it? So let's see who our star learners are this week. We, are you ready? We have in year one, Ash class. Star learner this week is Pharaoh. He has worked exceptionally hard on his reading during lockdown and is now ready to become a rainbow reader. Well done, Pharaoh, that's fantastic. And in chestnut class, for being such a lovely member of Chestnut Class, you always try your best and work hard. It's been lovely teaching you this year. And Miss Mortishead hopes you have a wonderful time in your new school. And that's for Amna, who's moving house um, to too far away to come to Glenfroom anymore. So we're a little bit sad about that. But good luck, Amna, in your new school and your brother, Mohammed. And in Elm Class, to Polly and Denia, Mr. Ralph has done it again. Polly and Denia, two star learners in Elm class for continuing to work so hard on your home learning. Not for much longer, because you'll be coming back. Um, so well done to both of you. And in Rowan class, for an incredible diary entry as a World War II evacuee, you included all the features that year two have been learning and more. So well done, Sully. So well done, Sully, for that. And in Beach Class, for working really hard on Google Classroom, your commitment to your work is fantastic. Well done for always turning in your learning and trying your best. This is to Alicia in Beach Class. Well done, Alicia. And from Cedar Class, for writing a brilliant recount in the role of Oliver Twist with some excellent descriptions of Fagin's horrid den. This goes to Eve. So well done in Cedar Class for Eve. Then moving up to year four for Oak class, for working so hard coming back to school and improving your writing. Mr. Shepherd has been really impressed and this goes to Emily. So well done, Emily, star learner. And in Hazel class, the star learner in Hazel class is Avril. Well done, Avril. Avril has researched and written a very informative explanation text all this week about, about an Alexa. She's been working really hard on all of her learning at home. So well done, Avril. Looking forward to seeing you next week. And in Holly class, 
the certificate goes to race so well done race some amazing work on google classroom over the last two weeks showing effort and creativity so really well done race and sycamore for con consistently completing her google classroom learning throughout the whole time she's been away from school and completing it to a high standard We've seen how much effort you've been putting in. I've been proud to hear that you've been doing further research because you wanted to know more. Now, I know this person has already been star learner, but this is a very well-deserved star learner and it's for, for Lara. So really well done, Lara. And let's hope that learning attitude rubs off on everybody else when we come back in because we, we, we want you to be flying when you come back. So well done to Lara. And in Pine class, for her fantastic informal letter, You've like, incorporated ideas for the book and adopted a formal tone to create an informative and mature letter. You've really wowed Miss Ross, wowed Miss Rosser, and this is for you, Hazel, Hazel, star learner this week in Pine Class. Well done, Hazel. And also, Miss Rosser wanted to give a shout out to someone who's not in her class. So she said, I know he's not in my class, but I've been really impressed with the way Alfie has been persevering and making a conscious effort to improve his handwriting. So well done, Alfie. Miss Rosser says really well done for that. And our last star learner in Juniper class, Oscar, for an amazing effort during home learning and a fantastic lettering role based on the class book, Gorilla Dawn. So really well done, Oscar. Um, fantastic piece of work there star learner and then gold learners this week from cherry class we have two gold learners Aeon and Anaya. from rowan class we have two gold learners shyla positive attitude to learning well done and woody taking responsibility for your learning and checking it carefully and in oak class we have a gold learner who is layla rose day so well done layla rose and um I will be round to visit you tomorrow if you're in school with Gold Learners. And also, don't forget, we'll be sending your certificates in the post or bringing them to school if you're here. Now, we have one more thing to show you today. And this is something exciting that is happening next week. So I have a guest appearance in assembly today and I will show you who from. So listen carefully for something exciting that is happening next week, as well as coming back to school. You're coming back to school for this. Hi everyone, um, Miss Bonner and Miss Fitzwilliam here. Uh, we just wanted to tell you a little bit about what's going on next week, because um, it's a very exciting week uh, called Waste Week. And this year we're focusing on food waste um, and you'll be getting an assembly soon. We'll be sending it through to your teachers with lots of information about why it's really, really important not to waste food. Um, and during the week, we'd like you to just really think about what you're eating, try and eat as much of it as possible, um, and just be really, really thoughtful. Um, and this goes for at home as well. So when you've got leftovers at home, we want you to think about maybe could you save it for another day? Could you change it into a completely different meal? Uh, could you put it in the freezer? Those sorts of things. Um, you'll be getting lots of information during the week. Um, and it's just a really nice opportunity just to really think about food what we're eating and what we're wasting and what we're still eating. Um, a really exciting competition is going to be going on next week as well, um, which is being run. We want to get lots of people's entries for interesting recipes that you've been using using your leftover food so it can be anything at all it could be something sweet it could be something savory you've had a meal you've got some leftovers and we want you to think about what you could use for them use to make another meal instead um, so you're going to write down your recipe enter the competition and then the winning entries are actually going to be made into a real cookery book mm -hmm. which is very exciting again your adults at home will get lots of information about this uh, this is just so that you know it's going on um, so we'd love to see you getting creative, thinking about different ways of using food and not wasting it. We're also going to be thinking um, about plastics this week. Um, so in school, we're going to have collection points for plastics in your classrooms and in the dinner halls. Um, so we really want no plastic to go in the black bin this week at all. So that could be stuff from your lunch boxes, so wrappers, food wrappers, things that are uh, considered non-recycled plastic. So that's the bin stuff that we often put in black bins. We want to collect that, but also hard plastics. So classroom waste 
um, that you might that might go in the black bins now. We're going to have a collection box for you to put that in in the classrooms. We're going to then eco cats are going to use it um, to get the information that we need about what plastic what what plastic we've got we're wasting in the school we're using and come up with some projects with that. Um, we're also going to be collecting the food waste from year four from their a fruit that they get to and that's going to we're going to use that to feed the pigs for that week and hopefully carry that on and then and year one have been doing a great job saving their food waste from snacks to to go into the compost bins up in the orchard so they'll be continuing with that too great so we can't wait to see what you get up to next week and have lots of interesting conversations about food waste um, and look out for some more information uh, from the beginning of next week. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, so thank you very much to Miss Bonner and Miss Fitzwilliam for that. Um, and that's all. That's all from us today. So have a lovely day. Last day of lockdown today, and we cannot wait to see you all back next week. Um, as I said I, before, I know some of you will have be feeling a little bit wibbly wobbly about it but it's just school it's just the same as it's always been we're here for you and um we can't wait to see you and i know your friends are looking forward to seeing you so um have a lovely weekend a lovely day today lovely weekend and i will see you all next week <laughs>